Namaste, everyone. Okay, today we are going to introduce vargas. Divisional charts is what they're called in English. A varga just means a division. You can also hear it called amshas or amsas, like A-M-S-A, -A, like what is at the end of most of these words. That means division as well. Um, now, where to begin with Vargas and divisional charts? Uh, this is something that most people are not familiar with. The Rashi chart, or the D1, the first divisional chart, is the normal horoscope we all know and love. But in, you know, like most Western astrology people, or even a lot of people that are curious about Vedic astrology, don't know that this is just one of 16 charts, or Vargas. So the Rashi chart is really just Varga number one and Varga number two and three and four, blah, blah, blah. They all come from here. They all are, you could say that they are extrapolated out of the birth chart. I like that word. So these are not separate calculations. These are calculations made out of the one calculation of the Rashi chart. So the Rashi chart is a division of a 360 degree circle into 12 divisions. That's the D1. The D2 is now dividing those 12 up into two. So each sign is now divided into two. So now it's like there's 24 signs with, one, with each sign repeating twice. And so that's how the Hora chart works. The Drekana chart is when you divide the, the normal sign of 30 degrees up into three. So you divide it into 10 degree portions each. Um, for example, like if your sun is in the first part of Aries, it will be in Aries in the Rashi chart and it will stay in Aries in the D3. If it's in the second portion between 10 to 20 of Aries and the D3 will go to Leo, which is the next sign of its same element. And if it's in the last three, it will go to uh, Sag. So I'm not gonna go into breaking down like all the calculations of each of these, but this is just like the broad overview understanding of the Vargas, but that's how these Vargas work. And what's fascinating is that this is all unique to Vedic astrology, but there's a lot of hints that Western astrology had Vargas in ancient times and somehow just lost them. Um, there's two main hints for that. The one hint is that well, Western astrology does actually have the Drekana Varga. They call it decanates. So if the sun is, like my sun is at uh, 20 degrees Aquarius, I think. So it's actually in the third decanate. Zero to 10 of Aquarius would be the first decanate. And the sun would stay in Aquarius in the Drekana. 10 to 20, the sun would move to the next uh, sign of its element. So if it's an Aquarius, it will move to the next air sign which would be Gemini. And then if it's from 20 to 30 of Aquarius, it would go to Libra in the Drekana, which is another way of saying it would go to the, it would be in the third decanate. And so that Aquarius sun would act like a Libra sun. So basically they have this thing called the decanates, which is basically the Drekana chart. And it's like, if you're, you know, so if you're an Aquarius like me, you're gonna be a little bit more of a Libra like Aquarius. Or if it was in 10 to 20, you'd be a little bit more of a Gemini like Aquarius. Well, see, they're really just, they're just carrying over a remnant of the Drekana Varga. They, if they charted, if they made an entire chart of not just doing that with the sun, but every planet, they would be creating the Drekana chart. Now, another interesting thing that perhaps Vedic astrology purists won't want to acknowledge, um, but I just think it's really interesting, and I'm here to teach, so I'm teaching it, um, is like, notice how all these are umsa. Ch basically everything from here down is umsa, chaturtamsha, subtamsha, navamsha, dashamsha, dvadasamsha. Why is hor and drekan and not like horamsha, drekamsha? Funny enough, hor and drekana are not really Sanskrit words. They're actually Greek words. That's the craziest thing. Drekana particularly is a Greek word. It's not a Sanskrit word. There's no use of this word in any Sanskrit text other than astrology text ever. It's also the same for uh, for uh, Kendra, for like a Kendra being an angle. That comes from the Greek word Kendron. And 
Trigon was, was it Tri Kona or maybe it was Kona. Anyway, I'm forgetting, but Trigon, there's a few other Greek words that are brought into Vedic astrology. And that's the thing is in ancient times, there was so much more interconnection of all these cultures. In fact, the oldest documented form of Sanskrit is found in the Mitanni kingdom, which is basically like Turkey and Syria. So Sanskrit speaking cultures were all the way over, like Turkey and Syria were part of India in ancient times, in a sense. And that's where it gets really confusing because then the Judeo-Christian world is claiming that's their territory and that that was only their thing. But then why were there treaties that were invoking Varuna and Mitra in this ancient Mitanni kingdom? So anyways, Vedic culture, massive worldwide culture that might have spread as far as like Ireland and the Druids. They, I'm not saying they were definitely, I'm not saying they were Hindus, but they were really, really similar so much so that it's almost debatable where it ended and where yogic stuff began. But yeah, I mean, we've got like, we've got a lot of evidence of Sanskrit speaking traditions and cultures going all the way to Ireland, and all the way to um, like Southeast Asia and Bali, you know, named after the great King Bali Maharaj. So anyways, a lot of interconnection of cultures and the Vargas actually like prove this in a weird way. But that's, anyway, that's just more of a history lesson. Okay, so how do you use Vargas? Well, so each of these, these are called the Shodasa Vargas, the 16 Vargas, Shoda, Shodasha means 16. So um, there's one, the Rashi Varga, and there's 15 others. And each of these deals with a specific area of life. And these Vargas, the further they get, the finer they get, they change more quickly. Like this is the D30, you get every, you divide every sign up by a degree. So every sign in the 30 degrees is like one sign. So the moment the moon moves even one degree or the Lagna moves even one degree, that's gonna be a different chart. And so you see, this is why twins have such different lives because if you're a twin, yeah, chances are these few charts are going to be very similar. Your body, your Rashi chart is definitely going to be similar. But all these others are going to be changing. And that's why twins have a different path. But they have the same type of body. That's what's so fascinating is the Rashi chart is the chart of the body, as it says here. All these other Vargas are for different things, but the nature of the body and the karma that it has is the Rashi chart and the D1. And that's what's so fascinating is like people try to say like twins actually make astrology prove that it doesn't work. No, twins actually prove astrology does work because twins have the same body and nothing else. And that's what Jyotish says is that twins will have the same body, same Rashi chart, but everything else will be slightly different. House cusps will move. On average, every 15 seconds, one of a house cusp will change in one of these Vargas. So literally, unless you're born within 15 seconds of your twin, which is impossible, you're going to have a different life. So that answers the question on twins. It's a shame. Neil deGrasse Tyson and all these people that are always trying to bash astrology, like don't ever bother to actually ask us what we have to say about twins or they would get that lesson too. But they don't. They just don't bother to look into it and then they just bash astrology. <clears throat> anyway, so... Yeah, all these Vargas deal with different topics, and these are the subjects. So Rashi chart deals with the body. The Hora chart, the D2, deals with prosperity. Being able to have what you need when you need it. That's how we like to define prosperity. Pro spirit. How well are you at coming together with what you need? Siblings and happiness with brothers and siblings and also like teammates and associates. That's what the Drekana is all about. Oh, and then you have the Karakas. You know, for each one, there's an important Karaka. I'll just go ahead and explain that while I'm on the topic of each one. And there are multiple Karakas for each Varga, but these are just the main ones. So right away, if you want to know about any of these subjects, you just, you can, like, say you want to know about siblings, look at Mars, the Karaka, look at the D3, look at the third Bhava in the Rashi chart and in this Bhava. And assessing all those factors will give you a big, uh, a big understanding of, of what, what kind of sibling karma the person has. D four, the Chaturtamsha, 
it's the Varga of fortune or Bhagya, you know, like having more than your fair share in life. Talk a lot about this in the financial course, because it's a big Varga for financial astrology and for like if someone's going to really make a lot of money investing. Um, if that Varga is good for you, you should consider that. Um, Mercury is the Karaka because he's the planet of like playing the game of life so that you win. You know what I mean? Of He kind of rules how much fortune you're going to get. And then you look at the fourth Baba for that. Then um, the D7 is the Varga of children. And really, children are just your creative legacy. So any kind of creative legacy or creative dynasty you're going to leave is going to be shown by the D7, Jupiter, and the seventh Bhava in that and in the Rashi. Marriage is going to be seen most in the D9, the Navamsha. Venus, the planet of marriage, is obviously the planet you want to look at. And the ninth Bhava there and in the Rashi is what you want to look at. It's important to note that when you first learn Vedic astrology, you could learn, okay, Navamsha is the chart of marriage. But what does that really mean? Well, really, it's the chart of what you marry, what you anchor yourself to, what your ashram is that you commit to. So if you want to commit to being the best athlete ever, your Navamsha will show that. Like, it literally, it literally shows your career. And also, most people in the old days, they're career or their main purpose in life was to just have kids and keep the lineage going so that's why it's the house of marriage and like getting married and all that because that was basically like most people that's what they were going to do but it's really anything you're going to marry in life so a yogi it's going to show that he's married to his yogic path you see what i'm saying or like an olympian athlete it will show that the d10 the dashamsha it's the chart of great deeds and great fruits Oftentimes, people try to read your career from that. No, your career is going to show from the Rashi and really just everything. The Navamsha, like everything we said, the Swamsha techniques. Um, the the Samsha will say that, but it's really just the, the great deeds you're going to do, the status. Some people's status is like not necessarily career, like, or what, like being married to the most beautiful woman on the planet might be shown in your, D, in your D10, you see? And it has nothing to do with your career, but it's just a great fruit, a great karma you got to do, you see? Um, parents, D12. Uh, the Dwada Shamsha, and the 12th Bhava, this is what you look at for parents and ancestral karma. And that's why Rahu and Ketu are the karakas of that, because they represent our ancestral karma. And uh, that's a really fascinating topic to go into. And so this Varga is really fascinating if you're curious about parents and that sort of karma passed on through parents. Then you got your D16. This is the chart of vehicles, the Shodamsa. You look at the fourth Bhava, the Bhava for vehicles. You really got to wonder why an ancient, you know, culture like India would have had an entire Varga for vehicles if they were really just like, you know, using just hor horses and carts and buggies. But when you go into the mythology and uh, the Shastras, you know, they had uh, Vimanas or flying ships. And there literally is a Vimana Shastra. There are literally books that tell you how to build airships and things. And the Agastya Samhita actually shows you how to build an airplane. And a guy actually built this and demonstrated it for the Chicago World's Fair back in like the 30s. So India was first in flight, just so y'all know, not North Carolina, even though I'm from South Carolina. No, that's not correct. And even American scientists acknowledged this uh, at some point in the past. Um, so that's a really fun, fascinating Varga. And it's really interesting from the historical angle when you think about ancient aliens and all that stuff they talk about, with airships and flying ships and all, because they had an entire Varga for how happy you are with vehicles. And it's amazing because this Varga is still very relevant today. So very relevant Varga for us in our car vehicle culture we have. D20, the Varga of worship. You want to look at Jupiter and the eighth Bhava there. These three Bhavas are, these three Vargas are very internal Vargas. Um... The D24 is the Varga of understanding and wisdom and Siddhi. So it's like, this is more emotionally how you get down your path in life, which is symbolized by your vehicles. 
This is more what you devote yourself to inwardly and emotionally. And this is your internal intellect and understanding and more of that left brain understanding. Really cool Vargas there. Really important for your spiritual growth. Now, D27. I could talk about all these, but I'm just trying to, you know what I mean, keep it going and not make this video take forever. Subject of the D27 is your strengths and your weaknesses. And you look at Mars as the Karaka and the third Bhava naturally, because that's the Bhava of like your strengths, really. The D20, the D30, very important Varga for like health and difficulties and overall the path of the body. A lot of things they say for the Rashi, they say to double check it for the D30, themes of the body. Um, and it's the chart of Arishtas, Parashra says, which just means misfortunes or bad karma. And the sixth house, the house of obstacles. That's what you want to look at. So that's the, really the Varga of looking at just really the di most difficult things that are going to happen. Auspiciousness. The D40. The moon is the Karaka. And the fourth is the Bhava. How auspicious or inauspicious is anything going to be? You just can use that as a Varga to double check. It can just basically give a second opinion on any other thing. And especially if you're going to like win the lottery or something, that's going to be shown. It's kind of like the D4, but even more so. D45 is uh, the Akshavidamsha. The sun is the Karaka plan. The ninth is the important house. And it's really for all things, is what Prasher said. You could also say Dharma and purpose because of that ninth house and sun influence. And then we come to the D60, the most finest, most subtlest division and... It's for all things as well. And the 12th house is the key Bhava, and Rahu and Ketu are the key factors. Um, now, there actually are other Vargas, but these are the only ones that Parashara recommends, and I'm sticking with that. But there is also, like, other ones, like Panchamsha, the D5, or the D6, the Shashtamsha, or things like that. So you can always uh, think, you know, that's for the future, maybe. But this should be more than enough to overwhelm you with for now. And one way you can start is start with the Shad Vargas, which is just six Vargas. A lot of the old books, they would just mention the Shad Vargas, which is the D1, the D2, the D3, the Navamsha, the D9, the D12, and the D30. So it's interesting how they even wrote that one in. So that shows you how important that is. Um, and you can just check the dignity of these key karakas in those vargas. Like, say you just want to know about, like, husband. What's my husband karma going to be like? You could just look at the D7, and or you could look at Jupiter in all these vargas is one thing. You can look at Jupiter in the dignity in the D7. You can look at the seventh house. You can look at the seventh from Jupiter, too. Um, you can check planets on angles. Those will kind of set the tone. So if like Jupiter's in good dignity in the 10th house or the first in a Varga, that's very good. That's going to set the tone very auspiciously. And then you can read from the Karaka, like I was just saying, like from Jupiter, you could read the 7th. Or from Venus, you could read the ninth from Venus. We'll go into that more when we do practice examples. And then you carry over the planetary aspects. So do not make the mistake of looking at a Varga like the D7 and then like Jupiter is opposite Sun, don't make the mistake of saying Sun and Jupiter are aspecting, no. The aspects are what's happening in the Rashi chart in the heavens and then you carry over that quality. So like say Saturn is starving your Sun in the Rashi chart, then it's actually starving in all the Vargas, but the dignity of the sun and Saturn and all these ones will determine which one you feel it more so, which area of life you feel that starvation in. And so, yeah, you carry over the planetary aspects, but you actually use Rashi aspects for each Varga differently. So Rashi aspects are what you want to use to see what's aspecting what in each Varga. And these is, this is very useful for transits as well. When we get into the more advanced stuff, predicting events down to the day you got to rope these Vargas in somehow. Like for an important, difficult health transit, you might want to rope, you have to factor in the D30. 
Final note, make sure the birth time is accurate. If the birth time's not accurate, you do not want to go messing with all these Vargas. Because like I said, I mean, this D60, every half a minute, the Lagna is going to change there. So if that birth time is not down, known down to a minute, you can't mess with that. Even if it's down to a minute, it's still risky. So that's the other thing is make sure your birth time is accurate or don't do don't go too far into these finer divisions. All right, so now you've got enough on that. So now I can start playing around with Vargas more in the examples and that'll be a lot of fun. So any questions about that, please let me know. There's a lot more to each Varga. That's just a good broad introduction. Namaste.